I want to start off with a question to all the young adults in this room. Please raise your hand if you participated in a debating competition. So your school very recently beat mine uh, at a local debating competition. So I expected slightly more people to see uh, raising their hands. Now a question for all the adults in this room. Who of you recently lost an argument to your child at the dinner table? <laughs> I can see some slightly, uh, some, some faces are relatively amused. Some are also relatively grumpy. Um, for those who had a grumpy face when I asked the question, you might want to consider joining the first group who raised their hand when they joined a debating competition. Because one of the many things that debating teaches you is to argue quite persuasively. Uh, my dad can testify to this, that most dinner table arguments are in fact won by me. And that is why, in fact, uh, we now have far more uh, dinner table arguments, because he's getting a bit frustrated about losing all the time. <laughs> That's not the thing I want to talk about. Uh, debating teaches you many things. It teaches you to think quickly. It teaches you to speak in public. But the most important thing that debating teaches you is self-confidence. That is what this talk is going to be about. Before I get on to that, let me introduce myself. I'm Flores, uh, as you might have heard just now. I'm a second year student at Leiden University, but mostly a debater uh, at Leiden University. I coach also the national high school team. Um, so some might say that what I've been doing in the past years is debating too much for too long. Uh, and this is again something my dad will agree with. But the thing is that debating has taught me a crucial skill. It has taught me to be confident about myself. Uh, and what is important to remember here is what exactly is debating? Uh, some people have varying views on it, but in essence, debating is a discussion which is led by formal rules. The side which you are on is the, the side beforehand, uh, the amount of time you get to speak is decided beforehand, and the topic you, are talked about, like you need to talk about is also decided beforehand. So what does this admittedly a bit strange game teach you about self-confidence? Um, I think it teaches you self-confidence in three particular ways. The first way in which it does so is it makes you more persuasive to be confident. Who is going to believe me, or is going to believe my story, at the point where I don't even believe it myself? How confident you are about your story reflects on your audience, and it makes you more persuasive, therefore, to be confident. So therefore, to be a better debater is to be more confident. Second, by exposing yourself to a public to argue for a particular size, is you often need to overcome quite some nerves. Uh, some of the people who raised their hand during the first question might be able to testify to that. It can be a quite nerve-wracking moment to stand in front of a stage and to actually debate a topic, something you might not necessarily agree with. And to do that, and to be able to do that, requires a lot of self-confidence. And by exposing yourself to such an activity, you often overcome those barriers which prevent you from being confident. Thirdly and most importantly, often debating and being able to argue about lots of different things makes you more confident about yourself. One of my former coaches, uh, admittedly a bit arrogant, once said, I would not be afraid to debate any professor on their specialization or the topic that they know most about. And although that comment was quite arrogant, I think there's some truth in the fact that debating gives you that confidence to talk about anything to anyone. And that is not to say that debating will make you more arrogant or will make you not able to stand or have a conversation with. Because often, here's the thing, Often those who are most humble are also those who are most confident because they do not need to show off to the rest of the world that they are great. They know it by themselves. So before I want to talk about why this conference is all the more important, I want to talk a bit about the title of this conference because I'm going to admit, the first time I read the title of this conference, I thought, this has to be the most cliché title of any conference ever. Uh, that doesn't make necessarily a bad title, but it is something we hear all the time, that there are no limits. You can achieve anything you want. Uh, many of the speakers here actually repeated that very same cliche. Um, and the only way in which there is going to ever be some truth in that cliche is through self-confidence. Here's why. It is a necessary prerequisite to achieve anything that you believe in yourself that you can achieve that. To believe that, as some of the other speakers here might have done, that you start your own business, start a restaurant, uh, run for longer than 42 kilometers. The only way in which you are going to ever attempt that, to train for that, or put yourself forward to achieve that, 
is when you are confident that you can do that. And therefore, for almost any activity, any limit you want to breach, you need to have the confidence to do that. And so what the baiting did for me is that it gave me the confidence to achieve not just certain things in debating, but also lots of other things. Uh, debating drastically improved my academic record. It even made me more confident to talk to girls. Uh, and so, yeah, that is actually something quite unexpected, right? You would not think that of most debaters. It's a pretty nerdy activity. But admittedly, the confidence you gain from it actually helps you in lots of lots of different ways. Um, and I want to particularly illustrate this by a story. Uh, to almost two years ago, I went to the World Schools Debating Championships. It's the largest debating competition in the world for high school students. Uh, I was selected after almost a year and a half uh, of training to represent the Netherlands. Um, and in the World Schools format, the format in which you debate, there are free speakers. Uh, it's sort of similar to the uh, format of the Dutch National High School Championships. And I really badly wanted to be the third speaker on the team. Uh, why? Because you could do more rebuttal to the other side. You, could, you actually got the chance to be pretty mean at the other side. I quite like that. Um, but the problem was that my coaches didn't see that the same way. Uh, they thought that I was much better as a first speaker, the speaker who would set up the debate and would bring the first arguments. Uh, I didn't agree with them at first, um, but this was already something which was quite devastating to me. I was disappointed that I didn't get to be the first speaker. And even later, it got even worse. Uh, my coaches told me that out of the eight rounds at the World Schools Championships, I would only be allowed to speak four. So when the other hosts just said, ah, oh, this is the king of debating, uh, I didn't feel quite like that at the time, to be honest. Uh, I was pretty devastated. And at some point, I'd even, uh, when the actual news was told that I would only speak for a limited debate, I, I cried extensively. I I'm, I'm not going to lie, I cried like a little baby. Uh, and that might seem quite weird to cry about such an odd activity as debating, but at that point in my life, and to still it is, it was very important. Um, also, to a certain extent, my confidence was taken down. But I got back up. And the reason was that I had coaches and parents around me who talked me back into it. Um, specifically, my debating coaches at the time had lots of conversations with me about uh, how they actually felt that I could excel as a first speaker, how they thought that I could actually be one of the better speakers on the team just for a limited amount of debates. Uh, and through all of those conversations, I regained trust in myself. I got the self-confidence again to train, to train harder than I ever did before. Uh, I worked days after days just doing the most nerdy things, writing speeches, looking up arguments, reading Wikipedia about the world and current affairs in order to be as prepared as possible. And the only reason I did that was because I believed that hard work would pay off, that I had the self-confidence that it would all be fine, and that if I worked hard enough, that I would be rewarded. A couple of months go by, the world championships happen, and at the end I got announced as the third best speaker in the world. That is something which I never believed to be true at first, but throughout the process of that world championships, gained the confidence that I could achieve something like that. Now you might now think, ah, oh, but this confidence now clearly is only useful when you're debating. Well, it's not. As I illustrated earlier, it is only useful to any activity, uh, whether or not academically speaking, maybe in terms of sports, maybe in terms of personal relations that you have. Any achievement that you want to reach requires a level of confidence that you can achieve that. Um, so when I asked the first question of this talk uh, about who participated at a debating competition, I said that you should consider participating in a debating competition because you might win the argument at the dinner table. You should consider debating for a whole host of reasons, but most importantly, because it will give you the confidence to achieve anything that you want. So therefore, the message I want to leave and where I want to end this talk with is get debating, for it is the only way in which this cliche of no limits actually becomes true. Thank you very much. <laughs>